Hey everybody, this is what we're going to make today. My second set of gears made from quarter inch MDF. So we're going to start off by cutting out a rectangular piece. Again, it's quarter inch MDF. I'm just using the blade runner to cut out this section. Next up is to cut out the full scale templates for the two gears. I drew these up using LibraCAD. If you watched the first video, you knew you know that uh, my original templates had much thinner lines. This time I thickened them up. Now obviously I'm gluing the template down to the piece of quarter inch MDF that I just cut out. The trick here is to get the layer of glue as thin as possible so it doesn't wrinkle the paper template. I'm just using regular wood glue. If you look real closely you can see that the that first template I just glued down on the left hand side is a little bit wrinkled but nowhere near as bad as the first time around when I did this. I'm trying to get the layer of glue even thinner on this side. I think it is thinner so it doesn't uh, wrinkle the paper anywhere near as enough. So now I'm taking a drywall screw that has a real sharp point and very carefully just making a divot to mark the center of the circle that's going to be used to cut out the valley between the teeth. Trying to do this as accurately as possible, so I'm really taking my time here. Next up is just to cut the two gears apart. Again, just using the Blade Runner. Had this saw for a couple of months now, and I gotta say, I really like it. Alright, so here I'm using a, a pretty thin twist drill and a drill press, drill bit, and I'm just making uh, the divot that I made with the drywall screw a little bit larger. I'm not actually drilling all the way through the MDF here, I'm just making the, the divot a little bit bigger. And again, I'm really taking my time here, trying to be as accurate as possible. Now I'm switching to a half inch Forstner bit. And here I'm actually setting the depth. So the idea here is I cut partially through from the top side just enough to leave a small hole on the back side. Flip the piece over and then finish the hole from the back side. I think this worked out pretty well. So once again, I'm trying to be as accurate as possible, so I'm really taking my time here. And it's hit the stop on the drill press. It goes, in, it goes through the quarter inch MDF just enough to leave a little hole that you can see there on the back side flip the piece over and finish the hole from the back side. Same thing for the second hole, this time uh, more of a close-up view. You can really appreciate the thicker lines on the template now and you can really see how close the cut is getting to the template.
pretty happy with those. So obviously it went all the way around the gear. Now it's time to drill out the center. And of course I go through the same process for the second gear. The holes drilled out, now it's time to cut away the waste material. Again, I go over to the blade runner to do that. Just making some real rough cuts here just to try and get most of the waste material around the teeth cut away. Once again, taking my time. A little bit hard to see in this picture but I think maybe you might be able to see how how much material is still left around each of the teeth so then I went back in and tried to use the blade to kind of chisel away a little bit more of the material you can see on the teeth on the left hand side there that it got reasonably close to the line on the template The, the finish on the cut is very rough, so we're just chiseling with the blade. Alright, so now I've got a 3 8 piece of uh, aluminum round stock, and I'm going to tape to that a piece of 100 grit sandpaper then chuck that up into the drill press and use it to sand the gear teeth. So if you notice how much material is left around the gear teeth, compare that to how much material is left at the end of this little clip. I was very happy with the way this worked out. I had very good control and I was able to just smooth out the teeth and creep up to the line on the template. This really smoothed out the teeth very nicely which made the second set of gears so much better than the first set of gears I made. Now you can really see how closely I'm able to sand the teeth right up to the line on the template. That's it for sanding, at least the teeth. Now it's time to sand off the paper template. And here's a here's an occasion to really be very glad that we didn't use too much glue when gluing down the template. Kind of peel the paper away. sanding and eventually the templates removed and the gears made pretty smooth of course I'm working with MDF here very dusty material and sanding so I always wear a respirator all right here's the two teeth to the two gears rather on the board and you can see they mesh pretty well there still is an occasion for some binds right there. Another one right there. And the 
and you can see how much of a gap there is between the two gears and how much backlash there is. So I'm wondering if I move the two gears closer together, if that will improve the way they mesh. When I spin them a little faster, you can hear clunking noises, which is to be expected. So here the gears are closer together, center to center. You can see there's much less of a gap and they actually do mesh better. It didn't eliminate all the binds. I still have a bind here and there. But overall, I would say moving the gears closer together really helped them mesh more smoothly. So here I've just drawn a line on a couple of the teeth, zooming in with the camera. Just want to show how the two teeth move relative to each other. So there definitely is the sliding action going on between the two teeth. This close-up view too shows the gap between the gears, the teeth of the gears, which accounts for the backlash. There's contact right there between the teeth, sliding, sliding, even with the line, and then sliding away. This set of gears came out much nicer than the first set that I made.